Cojo caracoles del jardín Nos hemos entregado todo Por una cruel ausencia alguna vez Es inútil convivir con la inocencia en alto Nos tengo en celuloide en mi pared Solo puedo prescindir del llanto cuando tomo un poquito de más un poquito de más si de pronto aprendemos a matar On the north coast of Peru lies the city of Trujillo. At the local airport, the baggage handlers await a unique visitor, an aircraft unlike any other in the world, an aircraft that can perform miracles. It is a totally self-sufficient, fully operational flying eye hospital. The international NGO behind all this is Orbis. Now you may not have heard of them, and I know it sounds corny, but they really do like to fly below the radar. It's just the sort of people they are. They'd rather get on with the task at hand than talk too much about it. And that's where I can hopefully help. I've been invited to experience this, their 12th mission to Peru. It's my first mission, and I'm excited and a little bit nervous. My career isn't really great preparation for ophthalmic surgery, but I'm a hardworking girl. I've done my research. And if I can help shine a light on their work, well, then I'm all for it. I'm 63 now. <laughs> Look, it's so green, and this is one of the... I've decided to bring my daughter Kaya along on this journey. She's only 13 years old, but she's pretty switched on, and we're both looking forward to this experience. To prepare ourselves, we've gone up to the mountains and seen Machu Picchu. We explored the coast and got a feel for the living and ancient cultures of Peru. Even before the Orbis plane landed, we were both already a little bit in love with Peru. There are three primary environments in Peru, and all of them are challenging. Along the Pacific coast are the arid deserts, then the thin air of the Andes Mountains, and in the east, the humid jungles of the Amazon. It seems wherever they choose to live, the people of Peru walk a precarious path. The landscape is undoubtedly spectacular, but it is the product of that majesty. It's people who are the real prize. As harsh and barren as the environment is, the people are dazzlingly colorful. It's the changing of the seasons, and springtime brings the people out in a festive mood. On any day of the year, somewhere in Peru, there's a festival, which showcases that palette of color. This one is a celebration of mothers. In the remote highland town of Atusco, the mothers are dressed as beauty queens and paraded around the city. The bands and supporters sing their praises. The 
what a beautiful idea. A parade of mothers for all we do. And in this town, in one house, there is a very special mother and daughter. This is Camilla. As her eyes struggle to focus on the passing parade, her mother Anna is worried. The glasses are a temporary fix. Her condition is known as strabismus, the inability of the eyes to lock together as one. It affects her vision in many ways, but most importantly, it affects her depth perception. Living in a place like Atusco, with its steep paths and dangerous cliffs, good vision is critical. If left untreated, then her condition will get much worse. Camilla and her mother will wind their way down the coast out of the mountains by bus and pray that she is one of the lucky ones chosen for surgery. It will be a long and tiring journey for them, and they are given no guarantees. No vamos a barranco a tantear de la suerte. Las caras que sueltan sonrisa me fitan. Señor caballero de Lima, que ahora reside en Argentina, y cual José Antonio se acerca con una sonrisa de esquina a esquina. Since 1982, Orbis has visited 92 countries, trained 325,000 eye care professionals, and provided 23 million treatments to blind and visually impaired people. All of their missions begin the same way, with a deep breath and a leap of faith. Dr. Frederick is a surgeon and professor of ophthalmology at Stanford. He's a volunteer, as well as Spanish, the national language of Peru. He also speaks Russian and Vietnamese. He also happens to be a really, really nice guy. Screening days can be intense. Quick decisions have to be made that will profoundly affect the future of each person's life. Five-year-old Diana's mother hopes she will be chosen for surgery. Okay, so this young girl, her eyes began to cross when she was three months old. Mira Dora, mira Dora para aquí. She still uses this eye because it's not amblyopic. For sure, she needs a surgery to, to have any chance of fusion. I think she's a good candidate. So what possible surgery would we recommend? Um, I don't know if, I think both eyes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. lateral rectus, maybe one eye. Okay. Immediately both eyes. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Or the inferior oblique overaction. Maybe a transposition. Yeah, you could do a transposition like the other one, right? But a lot of surgery, you know? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Uh, yeah, so I think we have a plan for her. Maybe we do her here, here uh, just because it's a, a long operation, longer. Uh, since we only have two on the plane, let's do, it, let's do her tomorrow. Yeah. As well as hindering their vision, strabismus sufferers are often treated as less intelligent, teased, and ostracized. Dr. Frederick explains the benefit of treating blindness to the wider community. Vision should be a sacrosanct right that every patient should have. Every individual should be able to see. But if you look at from the cold, hard facts of, of economics and pragmatism, there's a limited amount of resources to take care of health problems, whether they be ocular or cardiac, pulmonary, what have you. I think that when you look at the value that you're adding, not just to the quality of their life, but being 
able to, for a patient now to take care of themselves, take care of their family members, take care of other loved ones. The investment of resources into restoring vision is going to prove to be one of the greatest values that we as a world can invest in in determining where healthcare dollars should go. When we make people see better, there'll be less than a drag on their economy, economies will get better, and that's been actually clearly shown. I'm lucky to work at the Graduate School of Business at Stanford, where they've clearly shown that if you give kids glasses, the economy of that city improves over a three-year time period. Something that seems like a no-brainer. Think about what the difference will be when you not just give kids glasses, but you take away blindness from large percentages of the population where you have dependent individuals uh, who um, can't care for themselves or others. <laughs> There are only a limited number of spaces available, and Camilla is still waiting outside. There are many other little girls and boys with a similar condition. Luckily, though, she's already made a friend. This is Francesca, one year older and also hoping for an operation. While Dr. Frederick does his best to entertain his little patients, Dr. James Lehman examines elderly patients blinded by cataracts. Peru has an unusually high incidence of blindness in people over 50 years of age, due mainly to the increased UV levels found in the high altitudes of the Andes. Being elderly and blind in a bustling city or in a high mountain village must be both frightening and life-threatening. It's incredible to think that 80% of impaired vision is either preventable or easily fixed. Okay. This is Hortensia. She has cataracts. Her husband's sight is even worse than hers. Blindness affects so much more than the sight of the individual. The blind become a burden on the family. They can no longer work or contribute an income. When one person is blind, the whole family suffers. In the case of cataracts, the surgery is relatively easy to perform, and it has life-changing benefits for the entire community. 2800 uh, in the right eye and 2100 in the left eye, so pretty terrible vision, pretty terrible vision. So she wears thick glasses because as her cataracts have gotten worse, it makes her more and more nearsighted. Okay, señora, ¿usted tiene cuántos años? Siete dos. Okay, 72, old. she's 72 years old. ¿Por qué ha esperado bastante? Cost. So she put up with it and put up with it because it was expensive. And it finally got to the point where she just doesn't want, that she says it definitely needs to be fixed. Oh, hey. Camila, mire. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es? nombre ese? And finally, it's Camila's turn to be assessed. Dora. Yeah? Dora. And su, su amiga? Mira, mira, posa. Mira, mira, mira. Mira, mira, mira. So, not much deviation. Yeah. But up close, mira para aquí. She does have deviation. Mira, mira, posa. Mira, 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 mira. That's good. Yeah. So she's measuring about 15. At first, she was measuring less. So first, you want to make sure that her refraction is correct, because this is a year old, about. Mm -hmm. It means I'll bet you that she has more high proper correction. So let's do this. Let's give her some drops today. Uh, have her come back. So she's on the way. Here you go. For the stick. OK. You're welcome. OK. To better diagnose Camilla, Dr. Frederick asked the nurses to administer special eye drops, which will dilate her pupils. He needs to be sure that whoever he puts forth for an operation is the best possible candidate. Sometimes the, the, the mission is, uh, is a little complicated to figure out who the best patient is. If they see well in one eye and they don't see well in the other eye, they're not, it's better if they don't see well in both eyes, because then you're really helping their quality of life, you see. For example, this lady, she does not see well in either eye. That's why she's a good candidate. You also don't want to just pick the hardest cases, because you're training folks. If they're just beginning, they don't want to have the hardest cases. Let's just wait and see. Put them on hold about whether or not we'll do him. So we'll see some others. So he's on standby. Yeah, but let me stand by. Okay. 
doing cataract surgery on him is it's worthwhile but he won't have quite the improvement in his quality of life and vision that somebody else would so it's one of those decisions you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons so he'll get to, he'll have surgery here later but uh, we're gonna probably pass on him he's not the greatest teaching case and plus that question of improving the vision For some patients, the journey has been worth it. For others, the IRO will have to get to their children later. And in some cases, treatment may not be necessary. It's a pretty big deviation. Again, she's trying to accommodate. She can't, but she can still converge just fine. Okay. So this is a, one of those situations where without the glasses, she's really crossed. So with the glasses, she's a lot better. So if you were to do a, a procedure, the goal of the procedure would be to try and get her to a point where she could fuse, right? Because right now with a 15 doctors, she, she can't have any fusion. So what do you think we should do? Do the surgery, okay? Good, okay. Is this something mom wants? ¿Usted quiere la cirugía para la niña? ¿Usted quiere cirugía para la niña? Claro. ¿Sí? Sí. Yes. Yes, one more sticker? ¿Quieres una? ¿Quieres una? ¿Quieres una? ¿Le gusta Diego? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to fix that afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Camilla has made the list. It's great news. She will be getting surgery on both of her eyes. Señor Caballero de Lima, que ahora reside en Argentina, y cual José Antonio se acerca con una sonrisa de esquina a esquina. Meanwhile, back at the airport, the plane is ready for passengers. The stairs are a little steep because we've had to attach them here. They don't have an airplane this big. This is the biggest airplane that's ever been here. Wow. Now, it may look like a regular passenger jet from the outside, but on the inside, it's a total hospital makeover. It contains a 48-seat classroom, an audio-visual room, the laser treatment room, operating theater, substerile room, and recovery beds for pre- and post-op patients. It was a commercial for 20 years, and then when we got it in 1993... It in the theater, an operation is underway. There's something, again, unique about this facility here. Kai, okay, that's where they're actually doing the surgery. Exactly right. This is what we're now. He is now, what he's doing is um, outside the eye itself, outside the eyeball, but despite this, we can still take the video and transmit to the classroom. That's because we have cameras fixed to the ceiling here. Students in the front of the plane can watch the operation as it happens. They can take notes. They can even ask the surgeon questions while they operate. It is a training institute. In order to show the best practice, you have to have your own facility where you work as a team to show the standards. Because yes, you can do a program in a hospital, but you are not in control of many factors. Here, it is our hospital. We have our own team, and we can show what it takes to deliver the best care. 
And that's a self-contained state-of-the-art facility. The idea started a group of ophthalmologists who were really interested in teaching doctors uh, in other countries how to deliver the best practice and how to deliver quality eye care to their people. It is difficult to get people to travel to, to have their training in countries like the States or the UK where you need a visa, you need uh, credentials, you need a license to practice. The idea was actually to get the trainer to go to the trainees in their own hospital, in their own environment, with their own patient, with their own resources, and do the training in their own hospital. And I think this is a very good idea for, for two reasons. First, to overcome all the challenges that I mentioned before about getting them to travel. But also, it is very specific to where they work. So we are realistic and it is more sustainable that way. Oh, three little girls and three little bears. Overnight, the patients are instructed not to eat anything. For this reason, the kids are first up at the IRO. And what about this one? And the one? We call them Goofy. Goofy. The little girls chosen from screening day are bouncing around in the waiting room. This is the moment my daughter Kaya has been waiting for. Uh, there are four little pink girls in total. The first girl, Diana, is already in surgery. Her mother is understandably distraught, and Orbis staff do their best to comfort her. Quiero decir que es normal, pero usted, usted no puse ayudar a nosotros. The teddy bear is an Orbis tradition all over the world. It seems to work just as well for the moms as for the patients. The mommies are a little more nervous than the babies, but they seem pretty relaxed, which is good. <laughs> A hospital with all its strange noises, machines, and mass people is an intimidating place, even more so if you're not from a modern city. These parents are putting everything they have into the hands of the doctors and nurses. And I am too, in a way. I'm about to witness my very first eye surgery. Okay, great. Let's do it. Let's rock and roll. I've never watched an operation before, and I really never thought I would. Once I get over the initial shock, and with a bit of explanation about what the surgeons are actually doing, it so is pretty incredible. The muscle. the muscle is suspended on the suture. You see like a man hanging from a trapeze? Uh -huh. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna suture it back, reposition it further back on the eye so it can't tug the eye in as much because there's another muscle over here that pulls the eye out. So this just rebalances the, the alignment of the eye. So when you reattach it, you are stitching it to the actual eyeball. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So he does uh, partial thickness through the wall of the eye uh, to reattach it back. Yeah. You're doing good. You're, I am. You don't look, you don't look right. easy. You know? I don't feel <laughs> easy. <laughs> Perfect. Good. So Manuel has beautiful technique. Um, and this is, again, just knowing really what, what to do, a few little hints, so when I leave, I know that these children are gonna be in good hands. <laughs> well, that's true. One reason Orbis also does surgeries yeah, at local hospitals is to train their residents with the tools they have at hand. It's no use working with instruments and machines that disappear once the mission is over. Perfect is the enemy of good. You wanna do surgery safe and well, but you don't want perfection, because perfection, the longer that you kinda fiddle with something during surgery, the higher chance of having a problem. It is more difficult to operate in another country. You don't realize that the operating room is different, the instruments are different. So you do what you do at home, you try to do it as well as you do here. You go slowly, methodically, teach the folks as much as you can teach them. But you don't try to change everything. For example, you work with the instruments that they have. You use, you use everything that they have so that they can continue to do it when you're, when you're gone. It may not be perfect, but if you're too much a perfectionist, you probably wouldn't want to do stuff in, in the developing world. Orbis has a saying, and it is apparent in everything they do. We are not here to show off. We are here to show how. The measure now. Yeah, yeah, you can just cut. The doctors in any country are the same as doctors everywhere around the world. We all want to you know, minimize the burden of disease, and it's just a matter of trying to be resourceful. Use the other way, turn it over. Yeah, perfecto. 
you know, strabismus or crossed eyes, although it it often doesn't lead to vision impairment. It's a debilitating condition. For, oh, yeah. Can you imagine as a child growing well, up. Well, anybody, because it's such yeah. a social thing where you look someone in the eye, and I think if people don't know where to look, then... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge stigma. Uh, they can't get jobs. People think that their intelligence is not as great. About half the blindness in the world is pediatric blindness. So teaching the doctors here to fix this early, it's really valuable. It's gonna give people years of productive vision, productive living, and not have to be dependent. Mm -hmm. Like at this age, did she even understand that her eyes were different? Like, is she excited to be having the surgery? Does she know that? Yeah, no. Like, has she gotten teased yet? She or? doesn't get teased. So kids are nice until <laughs> around the age of seven, and that's when kids get mean. One of the challenges of working with children is the children really could care less about their conditions. The yeah. parents care deeply. So you know that what you're doing is really making an investment. <clears throat> the kids eventually understand why you did what you did, and yeah. they're very happy for it. The parents know right away. Like all pediatric specialties, you know, you're treating the parent as well as the child. That's good. That's perfecto. It's bien. Yeah. Hmm. Beautiful. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. <laughs> would, would you like me to, you know, dab your brow? <laughs> then he'll start sweating. And just as I'm feeling confident, I start feeling a bit weak in the knees. I'm going to step out for one minute so I don't get a little. And so, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just need oh, well. a little. I am still a rookie. Well, I think what's incredible also is how. They just kind of manhandle tissue. Like that way he's like hooking the worm out or, you know, you know. I mean, they had that thing that looked like a dental tool. I get a second wind and I really want to see the end of Diana's surgery. So it was just a little feeling a little queasy for a minute. Yeah, but. that's normal. Is this the same muscle that you're just now no, finishing up? Oh, this is a new one. So this is the last one. So we're in the home stretch here. This is the outer one, the one that pulls the eye out. So in order to make it stronger, we cut a piece of it out. So it's like taking a rubber band and shortening the rubber band. You know, if you shorten the rubber band, it's going to be harder to stretch it out, so it's going to have more force. The surgery takes about three hours. Five muscles have been ingested in all. There's very little rest for the staff. As Diana is taken into recovery, Camilla is prepared for her surgery. Our little patients have been fasting since yesterday. Some of the staff have developed some unique ways to keep their minds off food. To be a natural with uh, yeah. the, the, the three triplets yeah. and these little girls I know. sisters. I know. Well, in. probably when the fourth was in there, they probably all were right. the They're so sweet. Good. Good. Kaya has just loved spending time with the girls. And I really feel for the mothers. It's so tough watching your child in pain. The doctors have told me that tomorrow these girls will see the world in a whole new way. I can't really believe it. I guess I'll have to see for myself. This is Hortensia? This is Hortensia, yeah. She's going to be the last surgery of the day. Buenos dias. Buenas. Uh, nice to see you. Hi, how are you? Hi. Are you her uh, daughter? Sobrina, sobrina. Her niece. Oh, OK. Hola, my... hola. Que me están haciendo un reportaje a mi vista, que mejor es lo que más quiero. I've been able to watch some of the work they do, and it's just incredible. Que ha visto antes, You're in good hands. Que, que está, que usted está en buenas manos. Yo en buenas manos he visto que muy buenos es. Okay. 
actores que cuando me han entrevistado el lunes que yo he venido a la entrevista. She says she's had a good feeling since the screening day that she oh, felt comfortable. Sí, so. muy bueno, para que yo dije, ay, gracias a Dios que ojalá me puedan. Well, good luck, buen suerte. Qué buena suerte. I still can't get over the fact that many of the staff are volunteers. What motivates them to spend their holidays doing the same thing they do back home? Why is it so different? Most of us want to do it because we realize that it's uh, gratifying, fulfilling work that's serving uh, a greater goal of helping somebody with a condition, make them feel better, restore their potential. And that's what every single one of us wants to do when you go to medical school. And you go through medical school, which is four years, and then you go through residency training, which is anywhere from four to 10 more years. And then you get out and you get involved in private practice. And then the pressures of, of, of being not just a physician, but someone's partner, uh, a father, uh, uh, you know, a mother, uh, a business person, all these pressures are added on and you can sometimes forget what motivated you in the first place. And when you come on an Orbis trip, your only job is to try and make people feel better and help other people learn how to make them feel better. It's invigorating and uh, restorative. In the waiting room, it is Hortensia's turn for her operation. It might be a big day for her in terms of undergoing surgery, but take into account she has never even been on a plane before. Compared to the complexity of strabismus cases, Cataract yeah, surgery has been refined to a relatively simple 15-minute operation. In the front of the eye, uh -huh. it is clear. It is exactly like the glass of my watch, right? Behind it, we have the iris, and then comes the lens. Lens is still clear. It has to be clear for us to see, because the light is coming all the way across from here to the back of the eye. Cataract happens when this part, which is crystal clear, becomes cloudy, white. And that's when the patient stops to see with the eye, and we have to remove it. We go through a small hole here, and we open this lens, we mm -hmm. suck the contents out, and we put a new lens in the eye. And then right away they can see? Right away. 6-6 six, six vision. Yes. While Hortensia is in surgery, Kaya and I are given a crash course in surgical technique. Oh, <laughs> you're blind. OK, I would blind somebody. <laughs> no, no, not yet. Yeah, go a little deeper. bit deeper. Exactly. Excellent. Good, well, Kai. Oh, you got it. Good, look at you. Oh, yeah. Yep. The Holding it like you can. All movements coming from your rest. Okay. This task is just about how you control your depth inside the eye without touching other structures that you are not interested in. When you complete this task, you will be able to tell where exactly in the eye you want to be, where is the depth, and what to touch and what not to touch. This is a step to prepare you to go for actual cataract surgery. Well done. Perfect. Thankfully for the patients, our journey into surgery stops there. And for the time being at least, so does Hortensia's. The following day, patients return to the IRO for checkups. Our little girls have removed their patches overnight. What is the name of this princess? Princess Sofia. This is Sofia. For some, recovery is very quick. Ah, I don't know this way. You can see the light reflex. It's uh -huh. nice. And, nice. You see how the light is shining in their eyes? And yeah. you see how the light is in the middle of both eyes? Yes. See about, before, it was way turned in. So in other words, you know, if you look at my eyes, see how it's crossed and see yeah, yeah. how the light is oh, in the middle? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we teach parents how to look Check. for crossed eyes, that's an easy way to do it. Her alignment is excellent. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we can see that the, there's a little bit of redness on the inside. That's where we're working on. Right. That's yeah, that I'm, filmy material. Right. Uh, and that will heal up. Within a week, it'll okay. be almost, almost white again. Camilla has yeah. bounced right back to her cheeky yeah. self. I did one side, and our trainee did the other side again. And so uh, <laughs> both eyes were straight. <laughs> The chance of her needing another operation is very low. And the chance of her not needing glasses when she's eight, nine, ten, she'll have grown out, grown out of her glasses by then. Mm -hmm. That's great. A distant memory. Mm -hmm. That's great. Sitting and watching someone recover their sight is astounding. Something so simple that we all take for granted. This 13-year-old became so blind that he stopped going to school. My very first service mission was in to Burma. And our job was to teach pediatric cataracts. Cataracts can occur in children. And there was a patient there. In the old days, we had not just numbers, but people would get nicknames. And he always came in in green pajamas, so we called him Green Pants. He had cataract in both eyes. And so we had to do surgery on both eyes. And the surgery went well. And I was lucky enough to go back to Burma the next year on a second Orbis trip. The father brought the boy back. And he was seen. He was now about two years old. He was running around playing with toys and other kids just like any other kid. The father had carved this wood carving of a hand holding an eye. Uh, and he said, I want you to have this because your hands help my child see. And I want you to remember us. And it says on the back, from Green Pants. So I remember that. And I think how, even though I only helped one individual on that day, it changed that little boy's life, that family's life. When you have an opportunity for that to happen in your life, you can't help but be permanently affected. So even though I've changed jobs, I've taught at lots of places, Stanford and UCSF and Dartmouth, who knows where I'll be in another five years, but I know that I'll always be coming back to Orbis. Francesca is resisting Dr. Frederick's efforts to check the results of the operation. So the goop kind of welds the eyes shut, and so that's one of the reasons you a hard time opening. Bueno, bravo. Maybe a tissue. Ah, no duele. Oh, perfecto, mi amor. Papel. Papel. Bueno, bueno. Okay. Ah, es más más fácil abrir sus ojos ahora. No, intente. Por mí. Tiene dos. Oh, it's pretty. Ayuda, poquito, okay? It's okay. It's okay. Solamente, and no más, okay? Entende? No, no puedo echar nada. Solo para que vean las figuras que. Gracias por usted, por la California. Bueno. Yeah, bueno, mi amor. Y poquito. Si no duele. Bueno. Ah, bueno. Mira la luz. Linda, poquito más, okay? Mira, mira la luz. Mira la luz. Yeah, so you see again, look at the white, the white reflex. You see it centered within yeah. both eyes. And before. Just so no, good. So we always check and make sure that she sleeps okay and that she's eating. Now I know why these guys do it for free. joy in people's faces, the sheer relief of the parents as they walk towards an entirely different future is, pardon my American, totally awesome. Stop.
Back in the village of Otusco, high in the mountains, Camilla is home again. Clearly, her depth perception is in full working order as she uses the beds as trampolines. On the day of her return, there is another festival. When we first met Camilla, it was the Festival of the Mothers. And now, incredibly, it is the Festival of the Children. And it might even be more spectacular and more colorful than the Mothers Festival, if that's even possible. invited to come and visit firsthand the Orvis Farm Eye Hospital. And I've got to do a lot of amazing things over the years, but honestly, I think this trip and this experience is definitely the highlight. You know, the plane is cool and it's impressive, but it's almost symbolic. I think the real work is the community outreach, and they're just traveling around the world, helping people, and not just helping people and then leaving, but really committing to the communities where they're doing the work, and teaching, and leaving something behind. It's like the appendix of the eye, right? Inferior bleak, you can live without it. I'm gonna put you in your place. It is an explosion for the sense we perhaps hold most valuable, our own window on the world now open again for so many people who had perhaps silently drawn the curtains and resigned themselves to a life in the shadows. But it is more than sight that has been recovered for these patients and their families. Wherever you go, there's a rainbow. Wherever I stand. Orbis has rebalanced the playing field, even the equation, and given these children fresh opportunities to take on the challenge of life. To grow, to learn new things, find passions, find a job, and even find a partner. what we all want for our children. I know it's what I want for Kaya. A chance to shine, a chance to blossom. In Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and here in Peru, the hospital in the sky transforms the lives of all those who come on board. Even Kaya and I are not the same.
the volunteers, the staff, and the patients have reminded us that our lives are not measured by what we accumulate, but by what we give. Cojo caracoles del jardín que nos hemos entregado todos por una cruel ausencia alguna vez es inútil convivir con la inocencia en alto los tengo en celuloide y colgando en mi pared Puedo prescindir del llanto cuando tomo un poquito de más, un poquito de más. Si de pronto aprendemos a matar, aprendimos a cazar. Quisiera crear el suelo de mi pesadilla. Yeah.